We've all seen the videos of people pulling some pretty disgusting things out of dogs' ears, but how often is it that we see a video explaining why you should be doing this? Demonstrating how to properly and safely remove the hair from inside your dog's ears. And what can happen if you don't pluck and clean your dog's ears and why this happens. There are only a couple of products that you're going to need to get the job done. I'm going to share with you what those products are and how to use them safely. Where's the best place to get these products? Don't worry guys, I've already done the shopping for you. All you got to do is click on the links in the description of this video. And after we remove all the hair from inside the ear, we're going to clean them. I'm going to show you what ear cleaner to use and how to do it. I'm Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer and on that channel I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry. One that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives, as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and my favorite place to hang out, which is YouTube. So why should you pluck and clean your dog's ears? Without a doubt, the hair inside your dog's ear definitely does trap the debris and dirt into the hair, which keeps it away from the ear canal. Your dog's ear canal is very delicate, but can very easily become irritated. If their ears are never plucked and the hair continues to accumulate in there, then it only harbors debris down in the ear, which is a very dark place for yeast and other bacteria to grow. Grow. So in this case, it's important to remove some of your dog's ear hair routinely about every six weeks. Look at this picture of your dog's ear canal. You can see how it turns. You don't want to go anywhere near that area with any tools such as an ear pulling hemostat. In fact, any work that we're going to be doing inside of your dog's ear with a Q-tip, a hemostat, or cotton balls is all going to be done on the inside surface of the ear, just what we can see. Before we work in this ear, separate the hair that is on the ear lobe and then what is inside the ear before we begin to work. We are only pulling what is inside the ear. Apply a little ear powder to take the moisture away from the hair that we're going to remove. This will also ensure that we're able to get a good grip on the hair that we're trying to pluck from the ear. There are many different types of ear powder. I have the resources linked below for you to pick some up for yourself. It is very necessary to use ear powder. Remember, we're only removing what's inside the ear canal. There are a couple tools that you can choose from to use to help you remove the hair from inside your dog's ears. One is a locking hemostat or hair puller, and the other one are these little finger grippies that make it very easy to get a hold of that hair. Using your thumb to hold down the hair that is on the earlobe itself, we do not want to remove that. And using our hemostat, we're going to get a hold of about 10 hairs at most at a time and twist and pull slowly and gently straight up and out of the ear canal. Picture uncorking a wine bottle. You're corkscrewing up and out. And remember, we're only getting a hold of the hair within that area that we can see. We're not going down deep in the ear. If the hair grows that deep, it will come out, but we are only getting a hold of it right inside the ear canal where we can see. And watch what happens. Look right here, how deep that hair was down in there. That's okay but we only got a hold of it at the surface. And this is the hair that is going to trap debris, dirt, and build up down in your dog's ear, causing irritation. There is definitely a lot of controversy over should you pluck your dog's ears? And yes, you should. In my 18 years of experience as a pet groomer, I have seen really bad ears, trust me. And when we remove this hair and gently clean and properly remove the hair and clean the ear, it definitely heals up. If you rarely pluck your dog's ears and they have an abundance of ear hair, it 
will cause problems, guys. This is something that you definitely would have to do. It would have to be part of the grooming routine for your dog. You would want to do this about every four to six weeks if you have a dog breed that grows hair inside of their ear canal, which is typically our soft-coated breeds, our poodles, our scissor coats, our Bichons, our Maltese, Yorkshire Terriers, um, a lot of different Terriers, Wheaton Terrier. Our soft-coated dogs are the typical breeds that require ear plucking. Now you may be wondering, when do we stop? When do we know that we have done the job right and we're done? For me, it's when I can clearly see in the ear canal. I can see everything at the surface. I can see that I have opened up the airway, so to speak, into the inner ear of the dog. So in other words, air can travel in here, which is a good thing. When it's packed full of hair, no air can get in and it just harbors things inside of your dog's ear. But now you can see it's okay if there's a few hairs here and there, that's okay. We just wanted to open up the airway inside your dog's ear. So let's take a look here on Miss Buffy. How much hair did we remove? This all came out of one ear, my friends. So you can clearly see it was necessary. That is a lot of hair for eight weeks. It was eight weeks ago that I last groomed Miss Buffy. And if you're wondering if this is painful to them, I want you guys to go and rewatch the process. You saw Miss Buffy was not in any distress or pain because it was done properly and safely. And that's why I created this video for you guys. This is the stuff we do not want inside of their ears, guys. This will cause problems. But hold on, don't leave yet. We're not done. We need to clean the ear. And there are certain products that are safe to use. My favorite ear cleanser to use is a Bark to Basics product. You can get it from groomerschoice.com. It's linked below. This contains witch hazel and no alcohol. I want you to saturate a cotton ball with this product. I mean saturate it. We're gonna squeeze that down into the ear. See, we don't have to get down in there with our fingers. We want the product to get down in there. Just sort of massage it through a little bit. You want it to get down in that canal. And then when your dog shakes its head, which is good, it's going to bring some of that stuff up to the surface so that you can then take a dry cotton ball and wipe it away. Now let's take a look. Let's see how we did. It looks nice and clean, nice and clear, nice and healthy. It looks very good, guys. This is what we want. This is a very necessary process, especially on certain breed types, guys. And if you're a groomer, don't ever skimp on this. Make sure that you remove the hair from inside of a dog's ear when necessary.